And the next lecture is uh, by uh, Professor Korsnikova. So uh, my talk today is about the localized nonlinear vibrational modes in crystals and their possible role in energy localization and transfer. So first I will uh, tell about uh, interrelation of delocalized and localized nonlinear modes. Then I will switch to uh, nonlinear modes in graphene and their stability. Uh, I will talk about one dimensional, two dimensional and three dimensional modes. And also if I will have some time, I will uh, present some, some of our research concerning the interrelation of delocalized and localized mode in graphene and finish with short conclusions. So first of all, uh, let us um, uh, define uh, what is uh, what are localized and delocalized mode modes. So probably most of you uh, know about localized mode or discrete breathers, which are the exact solutions of the equation of motion in uh, nonlinear lattices. Uh, they vibrate with the frequency out of the uh, phonon spectrum of the crystal, which allows them to uh, not to lose energy. Okay, so uh, discrete breathers, uh, which uh, vibrate with the frequency out of the phonon spectrum, and thus uh, they do not lose energy and can uh, exist uh, for a very long time. They can also contribute to local, uh, energy localization and transfer in crystals. So delocalized nonlinear modes, uh, an example is... Uh, presented here, actually a uh, shortwave phonon is a particular case of delocalized nonlinear mode. Uh, it is also an exact solution of the equation of motion. And uh, it is important to notice that the vibrational pattern of the mode uh, is defined only by the symmetry of the crystal. It does not depend somehow on the um, interatomic potential or of, on the amplitude of the crystal. Uh, so, introduction of delocalized mode can influence on elastic constants of the material and they can also contribute to energy localization and transport in crystals. That's why it is important for us to study them. And there are two major ways of interaction of delocalized and localized modes. Those are modulation and stability and application of localization function. So, now let us switch to delocalized nonlinear modes in graphene. Actually, we have only four one-dimensional modes. One-dimensional, it means that uh, mm, they can be defined by one single uh, uh, equation of motion. So, and for the hexagonal lattice, we have four and only these four uh, patterns of uh, vibration, which was proved by uh, George Chechen and Denis Ryabov uh, by theoretical group methods. So it, it is important for us to study those modes because uh, they contribute to modulation instability or uh, they can uh, call, call modulation instability, they can affect elastic constants of the crystal. And also we can use, uh, um, uh, um, uh, use a localization function in order to uh, obtain discrete breathers from delocalized modes. So we have studied the um, stability of one dimensional delocalized modes in graphene. Namely, we have investigated the deviation from a given pattern as a function of time for the in-plane deviations and out of plane deviations. So here they are presented for all four modes. And we can see that for modes one, three and four, first of all, we see that deviations from the in-plane vibrations uh, begin to increase and uh, with a, a rather considerable slope of this um, uh, uh, dependence, uh, while for the uh, mode number two, at first we see the uh, sharp increase of deviations in the out of plane. So, and the reason for this is probably that uh, if we look at this mode, it has rather a sparse pattern. So when the particles are moving within this mode, they do not see any obstacles. And that's why uh, uh, the deviation of uh, in-plane vibrations in this case is quite small and uh, the um, destabilization of this mode is initiated in out of plane vibrations. So uh, the next what we did was investigation of uh, uh, critical uh, exponents for all these four modes. And again, similarly to the previous case, we can see that uh, for uh, the slope of the in-plane vibration for three modes, modes uh, one, three and four increases with the amplitude of the mode. So uh, this part of the plot presents the uh, interval of amplitudes where the vibration of the mode is stable. It means that it can uh, exist for a very long, almost infinite time. 
So, and of course, uh, by comparing to the uh, uh, considerable deviation of, uh, uh, of the, uh, of the, from the pattern of the in-plane vibrations, the uh, deviation of the out-of-plane vibration is quite small in this case for three modes, uh, for modes one, three, and four, while for the second mode, again, uh, due to its sparse pattern, we can see that uh, the uh, slope of this uh, out-of-plane vibrations is much bigger. Uh, we have also analyzed the amplitude frequency dependence for all four modes. And again, for the mode number two, we can see that uh, its, its frequency almost does not depend on the amplitude. So it is almost in the linear mode because, uh, again, because of its sparse pattern. For the mode number one, we can see that the frequency decreases with amplitude because if we have a look on the pattern of this mode, we can see that it looks like sliding of atoms along each other, which means that atoms, while they are uh, vibrating on the, in this pattern, they don't uh, see any obstacles. And that's why the increase of the amplitude uh, results in decrease of the amplitude. So while for the modes uh, three and four, we can see a moderate increase of the frequency with amplitude, with me, which means actually the uh, hard type of unharmonicity and uh, the possibility to um, uh, create discrete breathers basing on, on those modes. So uh, next uh, question that uh, naturally arises, if we have one component mode, uh, that uh, can we, for example, excite uh, two component modes, which are um, described by two equations of motions. And uh, the, actually, we tried to excite this type of modes, of the mode of rotating hexagon, and analysis of the displacement upon time revealed that uh, while the comp uh, X component is uh, quite periodic, the Y component is in this case is uh, shows some beating and which means that this mode is unstable and it cannot exist for a very long time. So actually what we did was we, uh, the fact that we added a small component of the uh, uh, mode number three, we call the, this uh, we call this mode root mode because uh, basing of on these modes that I uh, described in the beginning, we can create other modes. So, and if we carefully can uh, fit some amplitude of the second mode, we can reach some uh, regime where the both components X and Y are very stable, and this type of mode can exist for a very long time. And in this case, if we uh, combine the hexagon mode and uh, the mode number three with small components uh, with the amplitude that were carefully chosen, we can reach this uh, mode where atoms are moving not by a hexagon, exactly hexagon, but by, but by some arc type uh, pattern. And this uh, mode is uh, quite stable and can exist for a very long time. So uh, using this approach, we were able to um, create a, a great number of modes, a 12th mode uh, for, uh, to be exact. For example, basing of the mon on the mode number one, uh, where atom atomic uh, lines slide along each other, uh, we were able to uh, create mode number A, 1A, 1B, 1C, and 1D and 1F, so five new modes basing on the root mode number one. Then um, uh, uh, using the second mode as a root one allowed us to, uh, allowed us to get one more uh, mode number 2A, uh, which with the sophisticated pattern that you can see here. Uh, so then we also did it with the mode number three that allowed us to uh, get uh, three more new modes, 3A, 3B, and 3C. And the same was done with mode number four. So you can see uh, in total, we got uh, 12 two-dimensional modes basing on four uh, root one-dimensional modes. So it is interesting, uh, why should we do it? Well, what is the motivation? So let us have on this picture that uh, most of you probably know, it is the uh, dispersion curves of graphene. And we can see that the maximum frequen frequency that can be reached here is uh, about 50 terahertz, uh, which is defined actually by the smallest uh, wavelength, which is actually the interatomic distance of graphene. And we cannot reduce it somehow. That's why we cannot, it seems that we cannot reach some higher frequencies. Uh, but, okay, uh, let us try if we can do it. 
first of all, uh, again, let us see this mode number one, where actually two atoms are vibrating an entire phase, which should probably uh, result in the highest possible frequencies of the mode. And really, we can see that uh, the highest frequency of this mode is 48 terahertz, but uh, since uh, as, uh, if we are increasing the amplitude of the mode, its frequency decreases because of this uh, type of it movement where atoms are sliding along each other, as I told already. Uh, so uh, using this mode, we cannot somehow reach higher frequencies, uh, higher than 48 terahertz or upper limit of the phonon spectrum of graphene. But for example, uh, if we have a look on the mode 1C, we can see that the frequency of X component is 45.5 uh, terahertz, Y while frequency of the Y component is twice higher, which is 91 terahertz, uh, which cannot uh, be reached by some other methods except those two dimensional modes. And it is much higher than the uh, upper limit of the phonon, of the phonon frequency. Uh, actually, and a similar phenomena we can observe for the mode 3A, where the frequency of the Y component is twice higher than the frequency of the X component. However, they still are both within the phonon spectrum of graphene. So uh, another interesting fact that can be observed for um, two-dimensional modes is uh, the so-called negative pressure. So here, for example, we can, can see the stresses induced in the system uh, by four uh, one-dimensional root modes that I have shown in the very beginning. And we see that uh, they all of them create uh, so negative uh, uh, stresses, which means uh, a negative pressure in the system. And actually, uh, the only one, the, the only um, a mode which can uh, create positive pressure in the system is so-called transverse mode. Transverse mode is the out of plane mode in graphene uh, where six atoms vibrate in entire phase. So a uh, creation of this mode in graphene means that we have stretching of bonds and stretching of bonds means negative pressure. And, but okay, for we don't have the story for, for any of in plane modes, at least for root modes. But uh, if we consider modes 3A or 4A, we can see here that again, uh, this mode can induce uh, negative pressure in the system uh, in spite of the fact that is, uh, these are in-plane modes. So uh, why does this happen? Uh, we can explain by the fact that those mod, uh, the they are associated with a rotating of hexagons and a rotation of hexagons in turn is associated with increase of some length, uh, with the length of some bonds in the crystal. And this in turn is the reason for creation of negative pressure. So this is what interesting we have found for two dimensional mode. And of course, and the next step was to uh, make an attempt to create a three component mode in graphene. And actually uh, in this case, only one uh, such mode we were able to uh, find, which was based on mode, mode number three. So on these three plots, uh, you can see the components of uh, this um, three dimensional modes. Um, and actually, if we uh, analyze the uh, plot of the displacement of the atoms uh, of, uh, on time, where it is separated for all three contributions, we can see that actually uh, the major uh, fraction of this mod is the uh, third root mod number A, and it has, has very small insignificant contribution of two additional modes. Uh, so uh, the, free, uh, the amplitude freq uh, frequency dependence of this mod uh, uh, has revealed the soft type of nonlinearity, which means that the frequency decreases upon time. The energy of the mod, of course, increases uh, with the amplitude as it should be. So uh, the analysis of the st stresses induced by the mod in the system has shown that uh, the mod also, mm, the, this three-dimensional mod also causes some uh, anisotropy in the crystal because the uh, stresses in X and Y directions do not coincide within this plot. And so uh, one more interesting thing is the stability of this mod where we can see that, um, uh, for example, here we have also plotted the deviation of the uh, 
of uh, out of plane and in plane uh, displacement. So we can see that uh, in the very beginning, uh, the, uh, this deviation grows very sharply uh, for both in plane and out of plane uh, displacement. But uh, since out of place, the out, out of plane displacement grow faster when they reach their limit, we can see that uh, the growth of um, uh, the rate of growth of in plane displacement changes, and uh, it's the slope we can observe till reaching the limit of the uh, out of plane displacement, which then come to saturation both, and actually this pattern of uh, the development of uh, modulation and stability is repeated for different amplitude for these modes. So, and since it seems uh, it seems that I have a couple of minutes more, uh, let me show a uh, an example of uh, how. Uh, uh, localized and delocalized modes are uh, 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 related uh, in the graphene crystal. So this is an example of the modulational instability phenomenon, where actually a very sh a, a short wave um, vibrational mode was introduced into a chain of atoms. And then uh, authors have uh, followed, um, uh, have investigated the evolution of its upon time. So uh, at the initial moment, uh, the energy was distributed homogeneously. And then it followed some sinusoidal uh, pattern. And uh, after that, it uh, switched to uh, all the energy of the system was localized in one discrete breather that existed for a very long time in the system and uh, very slowly it was radiating energy and uh, finally of course the system came to a thermal equilibrium but uh, the long time of the existence of the discrete breather and its ability to move actually defines the, uh, the possibility that uh, discrete breathers and delocalized modes they can really considerably contribute to the transport uh, or to the uh, energy localization and transport in crystals so and uh, but for graphene, for the lattice of graphene, we have uh, uh, observed some similar phenomena. So here you can see the distribution of energy uh, in the graphene lattice where uh, a mode is excited. So here we have, you can see a homogeneous distribution of energy, which after some time turns out to be very inhomogeneous and all the energy in the system is localized in, in breed, several breathers, which can uh, move and uh, transport energy in the crystal. So, and another example is um, uh, excitation of discrete breather in the crystals. Sorry, using the, the time is almost yes, over. Yes, I know. I mm -hmm. think I have one, one minute. Yeah, this is my last slide okay. before okay. the mm -hmm. So, uh, we use uh, uh, so this out of plane uh, mode in graphene where atoms, are, uh, six atoms in the hexagon, are vibrating in entire phase, as it's shown here. And we apply a localization function that defines the uh, pattern of atom stackering, which is shown here. So, it means that we put some bell shape on our delocalized mm -hmm. modes and uh, uh, by changing the parameters of this delocalized vib uh, 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 of this uh, localization function, function, we can obtain different types of discrete breathers in graphene crystal. So, and here I come to my conclusions. So, delocalized uh, vibrational modes are interesting because they can change elastic properties of uh, crystal. Um, of the crystal, two component modes can uh, uh, generate this uh, harmonics with uh, double frequency and demonstrate negative pressure. And also delocalized mode can be used for excitation of discrete breathers and participate in energy localization and transport in crystals. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have, I think, time for one very short question, if exist. Yes, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Uh, have you studied the contribution of uh, discrete breezes in graphene to thermal expansion? Because it's known that graphene has negative thermal expansion and I think it might be related to these modes which you consider. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did not make studies exactly of discrete breathers, but definitely, yes, it is due to this uh, out of plane modes, but uh, 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 numerical investigation ha has not been yet made, but uh, you are right that uh, it is a good idea to do it.
Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once more.